Today I want to talk about event listener options. Now these are options that you can pass along when you're attaching an event listener. You're using add event listener and you want to add a click listener or a mouse over listener or some sort of listener touch start to an element on your page. There's actually a third parameter and if I jump into VS Code here, here's my basic event listeners for click touch start. There's actually a third parameter that we can pass in. Now originally when Add Event Listener came out, the third parameter was just a Boolean value. We just say true or false. So I'd say true, I'd say false. And what this had to, to do with the event listener was, are we using the capture or the bubbling phase? And that means, if I look at my HTML, here's a page, I've got a body tag inside that, there's a header and a main element. Inside the main element, we've got paragraphs. If a user clicked on the paragraph, and you wanted to do something with that paragraph. Well, the event has to get to that paragraph in some direction. The, the click event is either going to start at the paragraph and move its way up through the paragraph to the main and then to the body element, so going up to the parent, or it's going to start at the body and then drill its way down from the body to the main to the paragraph. Going from the body to the paragraph is called the capture phase. Going from the paragraph to the body is called bubbling. So this parameter, this third parameter, was originally called use capture. So I'll just put that here. Use capture was the original third parameter. Now, that's great, that's fine, it talks about this, and there, and there was definitely use cases for that. But there's other things that we would like to, to do, and being passive as an event was something that came into highlight as a problem when we started to get touch devices. Okay, we can use a touch start event, and if I'm clicking on the page, or I'm touching the page with my finger, and I want to scroll, okay, how do I know when the user has touched a paragraph, how do I know if they're, they're going to be doing something with the paragraph and interacting with that, or if I'm going to be swiping to scroll on my page? So passive has to do with that. And instead of this Boolean, what we now have is an options object. And there's three different things that we can pass in. Capture is one of those properties, and that works the same as before. So we can say capture false, and this is the same as how it used to be. So no difference from the original event. You click, it's going to be capture false, which means it's starting at whatever the element here. So the paragraph, it's starting there and going up to the body. Now, the other options, once, this is a really useful one. I only want my event to fire one time, and then I want the browser to remove it. Awesome. So we can add that inside of here as well as another option. And then passive, I'm going to do a demonstration in just a minute for that. So let's look at the default behavior as we have it right now. I'm in my browser, just regular default. We've got the latest version of the script. And if I click on this paragraph, you can see every time I click, I am setting a random color. That's all my function does, is it sets a random background color on this first paragraph. And I can click it a whole bunch of times. Now if I go into the mobile device mode, okay, and I can click inside of here a whole bunch of times, and it's going to allow me to do the same thing. You can see that every time I click, I'm getting the touch start event on the body as well. If I'm in the regular browser mode and I'm clicking, the touch start is not firing because in this mode, I'm just using a laptop here and so my laptop doesn't have touch capabilities. That's being simulated if I go into this mobile responsive mode. So here, if I click somewhere on the page, a touch start happened, a touch start happened clicked here, touch start is happening on the body, and then the click event is happening on the paragraph as well. So that's the default. If I go into this options for this first one that changes the color, and I say once, true, these are all booleans, all of these parameters that we can pass in as the event listener options. If I'm setting once to true, now on this page, I click one time, Okay, the touch start on the body happened. That's my second event. The background color changed. 
I click again, nothing. You can see I can keep clicking again and again and again. The touch start is firing, but the function that changed the color in the paragraph, that's removed after the first time. And even if I'm back up here, I click once, and then I can do it again and again and again. It's not going to happen after that first time. Okay, so once, very useful. Now in our second one here, let's add in that capture false. Then I'm going to add in the passive mode. I'm going to say passive is true. That's the default. So what are we doing here? We're doing document body, add event listener, touch start. So on the body, I want to know when somebody's touched it. If I'm in the regular browser mode, like this, that's not going to happen. So I can click anywhere on the screen. That's not going to happen. I still get this one working, but the body is not registering the touch start because I'm not in the mobile mode. If I come back here, I can click one time. The touch start on the body is happening. It's happening. It's happening. And I can click and drag. So this is basically how you scroll on mobile. I can do my two finger swipe like this, like a that's on my trackpad. Because I'm on a laptop, I can still do that. But if I'm properly simulating mobile, I have to click and drag the page up and down. Okay, so that's recognizing the touch start. That is with passive true. If I set a touch start on the body with passive false, now what happens is, oh, sorry, I can still do this, yeah, with passive true and false. The difference comes when I come down to my function here, so this F2 function. Forgot I had commented this. There we go. If we say prevent default, we're preventing the default behavior of whatever the event is. In the case of mobile, with a touch start, well, the person may be wanting to drag, to scroll the page. So if I'm calling prevent default, now I'm clicking and I'm dragging. I cannot do that. It's recognizing the touch start. Like if I clear this, you can see, yep, the touch start is there, but I can't drag, I can't scroll. And that is the combination of prevent default and the passive false. If we set passive back to true, refresh just to make sure, click, drag, there we go. I can move it. And it's telling me, hey, you can't do prevent default inside of a passive event listener. So that's what this other option does. So we've got capture, we've got once, and we've got passive. So we can go down here to the third one, prevent default on the second paragraph. Even if we add the same options in here, we're saying passive false. If I say passive false on both. So having our passive listener on the body and the second paragraph on the body, that's the thing that prevents me from doing the scroll. I've got my trackpad pressed down here. I'm trying to move it. I can't, but it doesn't impact anything in the paragraph itself. It's really the body that's being affected by this passive thing. Okay, so those are the three options that we can now pass in as an option here for our event listeners. Capture was the original value that it was just a Boolean here, but now that we have the object, we can say capture, true or false, which is the direction that the event is traveling through the page. Once, very useful, allows us to remove a listener automatically after it's fired one time. And then passive, which has to do with some default behaviors, particularly on mobile, when the user is expecting to be able to do things like scroll through a page. Sometimes you may want to control that, but just be careful about which default behaviors you are preventing. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I'll answer as many as I can. And as always, thanks for watching.